In the art market, it's really common that you need someone to support your work. Sometimes you need someone like a medium, other times you need some sort of collaboration with brands, or you need to found your endeavor. In any of these three situations, there is one thing in common. You will need to pitch your work to other people, and they need to buy the idea you are selling and make the deal with you. If you don't know how to make this pitch, come with me that I will explain exactly how you pitch for success. Hi, I'm Sira. I was born in an artistic family and as an agent, manager and producer, I've worked for many years selling artists from all around the world. Today, I want to help you to become a full-time artist. Hello, I am Sira and I'm here to make you a full-time artist. I will help you to achieve all the media you want, all the grants you want, all the collaborations with brands around and finding your sponsors. And how are you going to do all these things? Pitching your work. Okay, what is pitching? Let's start from the beginning. Pitching is when you present you and your work to somebody who will be making some sort of deal with you and make partnership to show your work or to work with you. In these cases, we can imagine, for example, in a media, TV show, radio, podcast, or any other media you have in mind, and they need someone to present, someone to interview, they need content, and maybe you're the perfect person to give content to them. However, like you, many other people want to participate in this position. So how you can achieve the position? Pitching this media. The same thing will happen, of course, if you were trying to participate in a competition or if you were trying to participate to receive a grant or you were trying to make collaboration with a brand or maybe you were just trying to find someone to sponsor the project that you have so you can do it. And in all these cases, you need to present your work. These people will need to understand, buy your idea and all aboard, they go with you to make your project happen. So, the first thing that you need to understand about pitching is that when you are making the pitching, you have a lot of competition and the people who are listening to you have a lot of work to do. So, you need to make this thing simple. If you want to have 10 tips on how to make it simple, please go to my last video and I'm here with the card on the top that you can just click there and you can read everything about how to make your pitch simple. But here I will give to you a step by step on how to use the simple pitch to achieve success. The step number one is your message. It means that you need to know exactly who you are, what you do and explain this in very simple words in a short format. I know, it seems to be silly, it seems to be kind of stupid. Everyone knows who they are, right? Not exactly. Actually, most of the artists don't know who they are. I was a creator for several years and I received many times presentations to participate in festivals, for example, and the artists couldn't express properly what they do exactly. Or when they express, they express in an overall idea. We are a rock and roll band. Okay, we're a rock and roll band, but a rock and roll band like you, I have millions. So why you? And when I say that you need to have a message, this message needs to also say why you. So have a very simple message that people can understand. If you want to know more about message, also you can go here in this card that I have a whole video about how you find your message. The second step, know exactly who your audience is. And also, who is the audience of your partner? If you are pitching to media, with whom this media talks to? They are talking with women, men, moms, singers, architects, who are the audience for this media? 
If you were talking about make a partnership with a brand, try to understand who is the possible clients for this brand. Try to understand who your audience is, who their audience is, and how they are aligned. When you discover how they are aligned, you can show to the people who will read your pitch exactly why you were the best choice for them. The step number three is know exactly who you are pitching. It means that if you decide that you are going to make a partnership with a brand, for example, go to their website and read everything about them. Try to understand in what moment they are at. Try to understand with whom they are talking to. Try to understand where their goals are. And when you will write your pitch, try to write the speech with all this information in mind. More than just the brand, you can look for specific people. If you are pitching to media, it's really possible that the journalists write almost the same things. People who write articles for fashion possibly will always write for fashion and not for cinema. People who will write for cinema will probably not write for fashion. So if you are a fashion designer, go to the fashion part of this media, of this new paper, for example, or this blog, or this podcast, and try to read every name that appears there. In general, they put the name of the person who interviewed or the person who make this article. And as soon as you have this name, try to look up this name. Be a detective. Go to see if this person has LinkedIn, if this person has Facebook, if this person has an Instagram. Try to see what this person care about. So when you write your pitch, you know with whom you're talking to. We are different and you value different things. So if you are writing for someone and you know what are the main values for this person, you have a better chance to make this person to pay attention to you. And the attention is the number one thing that you want right here. As I said before, people who will choose a pitch, they receive thousands of pitches. You are not the only one there. And also, these people have a limited time and limited energy. They will choose to do what is easier to do. So if you make your speech for them in an easy format, you will be ahead of lots of people. The step number four is put together a press kit. Some people call it press kit, some people call it media kit, but here I want to explain what this is exactly. The format is not important, okay? So if you decided to do this in a PowerPoint presentation, in one paper, in a PDF format, it makes no difference the format that you're going to present. What makes a difference is how well you present this information. And what is this information? Well, the first thing is you need to have photos. And when I say photos, would be up to three photos. You need one photo of yourself with a clear and neutral background when people can understand exactly who you are and how it looks like. This picture is the picture that people usually use to promote this deal that they have. The second picture that you need to have is a picture of yourself producing your work so they can illustrate what you do. If they want to um, have an interview with you, for example, they will need to use this information to illustrate. If you are looking for a grant, people want to see how you are producing your artwork. And also, if they want to choose you, they will need to show who they choose. And this picture will help them to show who you are and what you're doing. And the third picture will be a picture of yourself with other people or some type of picture that can illustrate better your message. This third picture is totally optional. It's really important to have more pictures when you already know that you're going to participate. But in the beginning, the less is the better. The second thing that you need is a brief explanation of who you are and what you do. And in this brief explanation, try to give the sense of what is your message as an artist, what's your purpose as an artist, what you do as an artist. And when I say that, 
Again, it's not super simple as I am a musician or I am a sculptor. But try to put inside the sentence something that highlights what your inspirations, creative process, what are your goals with your work. So people, when they read this, they can understand your uniqueness, but also make this as short as possible. As I said, these people don't have much time. And the more confused you get, or because you use confusing words, complex words, or because you write too much, the more possible it will be for these people to not try to understand and just jump to the next thing. In the third one, I would say for you to write one sentence that explains exactly what do you have that no other artist have around. And when I say this, Try to put yourself on the other person's shoes. And when you read this, your sentence, see if it really makes sense. I see several artists saying like, oh, I have talent. Okay, but I know a lot of other artists who have talent as well. Oh, I have a perfect imagination. Okay, what is a perfect imagination? I have an amazing, taste okay what is an amazing taste so you see sometimes people use words that when you we read like we are receiving this material and we needed to choose someone you can understand that it's really hard to use those characteristics to highlight someone because i bet that if you say that you are talented several other people also said that they are talented and you are just going to be messed up in the middle of several other people and no one will understand what you have that no one has why you are the perfect choice try to make it simple for people to read and understand that you are the only choice possible if you show them that what you do is unique your technique no one else does what you are standing for it's completely different from what other people are standing for or that you have a special award, a special connection, a very interesting audience that goes to your work. Anything that you imagine that you can show to people that they can understand, they can relate to that and they can see that you were unique on this characteristic. The more you make this a simple sentence, the easier it will be for these people to repeat the same sentence. People that will select you in the first level will not be the people who will select you for real. So the people who selected you on the first level needs to repeat your message to somebody else. And if you make a very confused explanation of who you are, what your highlights are, this person will have some problems on repeating this for the boss. And if they cannot repeat it to the boss, the boss will cancel you. And if they can repeat, they can help you to go further. So, especially in the highlights, try to make one sentence and one sentence only, explaining why you are unique. The first thing that you need to have is a list of your achievements. Choose three up to five achievements that you have in life. And those achievements can be anything that you imagine that was a milestone in your life. These achievements that you choose will help this person to introduce you to other people. This is the artist blah 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 who won this award, was in this festival and have this residence. Okay, people already know who you are. And that's what they will going to repeat over and over and over again. Where people can understand what you do, where you've been, what you achieved, but in a bullet point format. After this, list every way that the person can connect with you. In your phone, email, website, main social medias. This is also important to put a hundred of social medias. Choose like up to two social medias that are really relevant for you, that you have the best numbers or you have best engagement or that you are more present in. Because I know that sometimes we have so many different social medias that you are part of but we know that some of them you can have more contact, you have more connection with that group, you have a better understanding of the two. Uh, it's not all the social medias that will be the same. So if you list like 15 social medias, no one will know exactly where they should be looking for you. So go for two the max. 
okay? By the end, list your numbers if they are relevant, of course. So if you are uh, pitching a um, grant, it makes no difference how many people follow you on Instagram. But if you are pitching a brand for a collaboration inside Instagram, then these numbers are very important. Maybe if you want to be interviewed on TV, you can show the best YouTube video that you have and show all the numbers that you have connected to this. So try to make your presentation with the right information to your audience. In this case, the audience will be who you read the presentation. The media, the people who choose the grants, the curators, whatever person it is. But try to select for them the best information that they can have from you. After you make your media kit, you go to the step number five that you're going to write your pitch. So first, you're going to prepare this material. This material should be easy to read and especially like in one page, two max, depending on the format, depending on the size of your font. But when you start to write your pitch, try to focus in all the information that you have at now. So write for your audience, it means try to show to the person who is reading this pitching why you are the right choice. That's how you're going to imagine yourself, that you are in front of this person and you need in one minute max, explain for them why you are the best choice and why you're better than every other email that this person is receiving on that day. And how are you going to do that? You are going to start with the most impressive thing that you have to sell. After that, you need to connect this impressive thing with something that's relevant for the person who is reading. So for example, if you were pitching for a public exhibition and you want to receive a grant to do that, you are maybe pitching the mayor. And the most important thing for the mayor is to understand what the city will win with that. If you start your email just talking about yourself, you are not showing what they want to see. But if you start to say like, the city has these characteristics and my work has the same characteristics, that's why I am the perfect fit for that, now people are going to pay attention to you. And you can do the same for everything. So if you are trying to pitch to be on an interview and you know the show that you're going to pitch, try to say, I know that your show is directed for this type of people, you are looking for this type of things, you have those goals and I can help you with those goals. I can help you to achieve these people. I can help you to show a better content for your audience. You always try to help the other person with your talents, with your work. So when you start to write your pitch, the most important thing that you put in the beginning needs to be something that's not just important for you, but also important for that platform. The second thing that you're going to say is how you're going to help that platform to achieve their goals. The third thing that you're going to say is why you and only you can do that. Then you're going to say that all the other informations are on your press kit and give them exactly what they need to do after read your press kit and after reading your email. This is the best format that you can write. And if you want to know more about that, I have a full course about how to pitch your art for grants, sponsors, media, or for collaborating with brands. Go to beafulltimeartist.com. Now we are getting to the step number six. You need to send your pitch. So after you write everything, you're going to send this pitch for the right people. So try to investigate who is the person who you receive. Maybe you already did that in the past when you were looking for how to write this, looking for the audience that you are going to achieve with your pitch. If you already did this in the beginning, that's my tip for you. Now you just need to see if you were achieving the right person and the right address. And when doing that, try to make everything simple. That's the most important thing. That's why I'm repeating over and over and over again. Because if you don't make it simple, people will just ignore you and go to the next shiny thing. So if you show that you are easy to work with, 
easy to understand, the perfect fit for what they are already doing that can help them with their own goals. And you write in a way that you highlight the values that the person have are the same that you have. This person will agree with whatever you are asking. It's a no brainy decision. You are the best choice and you already proved that. So when you are sending your pitch, you have to think about all these characteristics. You need to have all those things in mind. And my tip number seven is don't forget to follow up. It's normal that these people receive tons of emails. If you are participating on a grant, maybe people read all the emails. If you are participating for a award, maybe people will read all the emails. But if you're looking for a sponsorship, appearing in a specific media, collaborating with a brand, those people will receive emails over and over again every single day. So it's really possible that they didn't read your email the first time that you sent it. And if you send it again, you have better chances for this person to read. If you try to follow up the third time, maybe you have even more chances now. And when I say send, it's not just to send the exactly same email over and over and over again, because you start to get pushy. But try to make the person to pay attention to what you're saying and to interact with you. So after two days, for example, that you sent, try to send another email saying something that Oh, I'm just checking if you received my email, if you have all the information uh, that will help you to make your decision. And I'm still here. If you have any questions, just let me know, something like that. Then after two days again, you send another email saying, I'm so sorry, I didn't receive any response on my last two emails. So I'm a little bit concerned if you received everything and if everything's fine. After two days, you send another email saying, oh, I really like what you're doing because of this 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 my audience also is your audience because of this 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 so i really want to contact with you about my first email wait a little bit more and send another email saying oh i'm so sorry to talking to you again but i did receive no answer to now and i know that i will be the best person to help you because i have this this and this things that will be perfect fit for you and so on I know, sometimes can be, oh my God, how many mails I need to send, but that's life. And every time that you're sending a new email, every time that you're trying to follow up again, it's really possible that people never open one of your emails. It's really possible that they were like with lots of other things on their mind. They have other deadlines, they have other topics in mind and you just passed. The thing is, if you send 10 emails, you have 10 more chances than if you send just one. Be persistent, but not be persistent in a pushy way. Try to be persistent in a way that you show why you were helping. If they can see this, you will be the best choice. I hope I could help you with all this information. This video is completing the video that we made last week. So if you want to watch the full idea, please click here in this card, watch everything, and then let me know what you think. See you next week. I need to tell you that I have a full masterclass for free. How can you take the leap and become the artist that you want to become? It's not a sales pitch. In this masterclass, I will help you with a real training that will give you the step by step. So if you want to check this, go here in this website and you watch a two hour class totally for free so you can start to be a full-time artist right now. Thank you so much for keeping making art.